I will stress this so much because I feel like I have never heard people say this enough and I haven't seen people who do this enough. People are always clueless. This is what you need to do. Hi my loves, welcome or welcome back to my channel if you don't know I'm Lulu. So in this video I'm going to be telling you guys how you can get double distinction stars and a distinction that is the grade I finished with in my BTEC course. So if you like that and you want that for yourself, stick around, please subscribe and also leave a like if you find it helpful and don't forget to follow me on my Instagram. The handles will be on the description box down below. I just want to say I'm in no way trying to brag about the grades I got and I take no credit for those grades. God is the one that gave me, you know, the knowledge, the wisdom for me to be even able to finish the course with such grades and I will be doing a testimony for that separately. Now that we got that out of the way, I recommend you grab a pen and a notebook and start jotting some stuff down. Girls, I got one thing and it's notes, period. <laughs> be serious. I have 10 things to offer and they're not in chronological order as in hierarchy, should I say? Oh, I just realized you guys might actually want to see the proof that I got the grades I'm talking about. <laughs> so for those who care and just want to have an overview of what BTEC I took and just to really understand a couple of things, I will put the timestamps of each point in case that's what you want to go for straight away. They'll be on the screen. So I'm just going to say the course I did. I did the Pearson BTEC Level 3 National Extended Diploma in Applied Science. At the start of the course, it'll be called Foundation Year, whatever, something like that. And then it'll be extended, okay? The course entails of Physics, Chemistry and Biology and is equivalent to those three year levels. Um, however, I have studied Year 12 AS level before and I will tell you that A level content is obviously way harder than this BTEC. I will stress this so much because I feel like I have never heard people say this enough and I haven't seen people who do this enough. People are always clueless. This is what you need to do. Number one, download the syllabus. Simple as that. Just have it on your tabs by default every day. Every day. And you might be like, Lulu, how is this so helpful? It is. And I'll tell you why. The syllabus is so important because sometimes teachers have quite concise powerpoints quite concise things that they teach you over the lessons and then you might meet the exam and just be like i was never taught about this okay i know it's their job to teach you everything in that syllabus but they may be lazy they may skip over it and what who wants to lose like bloody four marks on something not me i remember when i was studying for my exams I use the syllabus as a checklist. Forget the little revision list your teachers give you. I mean, that's useful if you want to, whatever, fine. But my point is, for the final, final exam, forget mock. Because mock, they're the one curating the questions. But they won't know what's coming up on the final exams. So the syllabus is the only thing that will save you. The syllabus is obviously heavy content, a lot of things. It's a big checklist. So you want to start with it early. I've heard so many people be like, oh, teacher A never taught us that and it came up on the exam and i just be like they're like yeah he never but meanwhile i'm back there like i went through this i did i went through it my free time and that's college you sometimes just have to cover things by yourself so if you think that the teacher's gonna do it no they're not they'll cancel lessons they'll barely show up you will be your own teacher and what it's the life we live mate what can we do number two don't sleep on your exams like what i mean by that is work hard do your very best in your exams and you might be like isn't that the whole reason why i clicked on this video no i just told you how i got the grade i didn't tell you that this is how to do well in your exams okay because the, the course entails way more than an exam i will do a separate video on that if need be it's the reason why i'm saying that if you followed step one once you have a good look on the syllabus you will see that the exam units they carry twice as many points as coursework units for applied science we have unit one and unit three and unit five and unit seven those are exam units those units like unit one let's say compared to unit two which is a coursework unit unit one carries 120 points and unit two carries 60 points in the overall diploma so doing very well in your exams gives you a big head start on 
the whole course itself. Number three, seems very mundane, but show up for your practicals. Every practical. Like, try your best and let's just stick or something. This point is more tailored for like, my STEM people. Reason behind is, you will most likely be called to do it some other time. So like, let's say you have review week. That's a week where you catch up on coursework that you're behind on, you know. And if you're not behind on any coursework, that's just a holiday week for you. So who wants to be going in to college? The reason why I'm saying showing up for practicals can help you get the grade is because actually, if you look at the syllabus, once again, <laughs> like people really sleep on the syllabus, man. I, that's why I made it the first point. If you look on the syllabus or any assignment brief or anything like that, you will see that the first pass mark is to actually do the practical. So if you have a very strict teacher, they will tell you they will not grade you that unless you come for the practical okay because you get a pass like p1 could be do the practical because forget about just if your teachers let you off you will be confused if you haven't done the practical you will be confused when you're writing that john you just be like so um you won't really know you have to be there to know how you're gonna write your lab report you know how can you write a lab report and you weren't there babes you won't write the best lab report if you're not there. Number four, very simple. Use your resources like your teachers, the textbooks, you know, what else? The YouTube channels, I'll tell you about those. But honestly, make sure you get the textbooks, okay? So I'll put them on the screen, the textbooks that um, are for applied science students. Do get those, they're very helpful. They helped me study for my exams actually those are the ones that I, use, I was using because they're from Pearson and Pearson is the examiner board deep that okay you can use any other textbook but really you should be using the textbooks on the screen because they're from the exam board most likely your exam board is going to be Pearson go to your teachers ask them questions if you're confused you know for your assignments I would always go you know I could be annoying sometimes but it's really helpful they're there to help you you know your peers people who actually are serious in class go for them and Last not least, you thought I'd forget this. It's 2024, man. AI. My friend, I was thinking of whether I'm going to leave this in the video, but I am. Because it's a very important thing at this moment, mate. AI. Okay? You need to use it wisely, though. You don't just make it do everything for you and paraphrase that John. Nah. You need to actually do something, mate. Because at the end of the day, some teacher might ask you to explain more about what you said because if they think you failed and then you can't say nothing what are you gonna do about it hmm? just use ai usefully like to just give you like bullet points and then you expand on them stuff like that okay youtube channels there's so many youtube videos that really helped me one of them was btech applied science help another one was bryson chemistry he looks at almost every chemistry past paper and does it all for you the whole paper okay he was very helpful if you struggle with chemistry he will help you for sure number five seems like passive learning but i'll explain my point okay hear me out notes are very important you might be like baby that's not active recall hear me out for coursework notes are important because there's several times if you don't write your notes specifically if you've done a practical and you need to write your readings down and stuff like that if you're like oh i'm just gonna put it on my phone i'm gonna write the readings down on my phone i'm gonna let bob write the readings baby what if bob disses you what if bob never shows up again you're done you're done you're finished you know finish you're finished my brother you are dead and gone so don't ever trust anybody to write your readings down for any practical you write them in your bloody notebook and not your phone because your phone can let you down as much as we say oh paper you know may let us down the notes may get wet or something like that and you know digitally it's always gonna work nah 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 man you might take pictures of that whiteboard pictures of that book and you may lose those pictures and never you may never see them again we always think that the phone is gonna work baby the amount of times i've lost pictures of people's notebooks and readings and stuff like that is uh, crazy so just write it down pen and paper the traditional way will never let you down most of the time i'm telling you baby never will hasn't yet for me the phone will most likely let you down which is so absurd and so different but i'm not the only one there's several people that can vouch for me please tell me like i already know some of my peers that have experienced that you take a photo of something you never see it again man 
specifically school stuff but you see the photo of when you was out having fun like, i don't get it man like it's like the devil be trying to make you lose your grade so write your notes for coursework and i would notice this sometimes the teacher might be saying some very important stuff and because people can't see the teacher writing on the board they won't write it sometimes the teacher might be like this is a good important thing to say in your evaluation you could say that this can bring certain uncertainty in the practical stuff like that you should be putting that pen on the paper and write that down sometimes the teacher gives you the answers and things he wants to see in your coursework in class but because you're busy just on your phone or just vaguely listening or just thinking that you'll remember that three weeks later when the assignment is actually due is crazy so just write that down it is scientifically proven writing something seven times can enhance your memory if you're doing applied science um chemistry there are certain um equations that you should know like the contact process if you don't know what that is it's like regarding the sulfur dioxide and stuff like that okay <laughs> i'm not trying to get into that too much but there are certain equations in chemistry that you must have in your brain and certain formulas in physics that you must you must have in your brain and the only way you can do that is by writing on paper and quit doing the flashcards flashcards i feel like they're not that useful when it comes to equations so please baby gyal write number six past papers these are very important okay i mean you will hear it in every video and it's it's the truth and one thing i'll say don't wait until mock season i saw everybody do this you start in september and most people touch them in november because they know that in december or late november that's when they're going to do the mock exams you'll do the exams the final exams in january mid january so people just start touching them in november fam the minute i started i started trying to read ahead like using the textbook to understand obviously if you're going to do the past papers early you're going to have to read ahead okay and it is very handy to do so because you may find certain um topics in the unit that are quite hard to understand maybe and knowing your difficulties in the unit is helpful because when the teacher comes to teach it you can just be like yo i haven't understood this can you carry on going over it can you explain it in your free time something like that man the mark scheme is very important forget using a textbook as your answer thingy mark scheme mark scheme mark scheme because mark scheme will show you certain underlined parts also understand the mark scheme there's certain parts that are labeled like ignore so if you write certain things the examiner will ignore it whether you're right you know this is common sense i believe until now you must have known this already that there's certain keywords people are looking for well examiners that are looking for that you must write so understand the examiner's mind step number seven is don't be lazy and don't wait till last minute don't wait till last minute to finally start the assignment the assignment is so big specifically unit six there's always like a assignment that you'll have in your BTEC that is like a big big project like a dissertation mini dissertation there are certain assignments that are so heavy like heavy content heavy things that they're looking for you cannot do that overnight mate you snooze you lose and this is something I need to hear for myself because second year I was screwing this up and the main reason why is because I traveled one thing I'll tell you as well this is not in my list at all for how to get this grade but I'll tell you right now I almost didn't get this grade because I traveled Easter time. I went abroad. And the reason why that really disrupted everything is because I fell behind a lot. Trust me, when you go on holiday and you surpass the holiday time, like I went for like a good chunk after my holiday. So teachers were already teaching. I was there, you know, at Cocoa Beach having fun and stuff like that. No, baby. If you can, just don't go on holiday. Like, I wish I knew that and I will never do it again. I'll never do it again because what turmoil it caused for myself fam never again number eight understand the grading you need let's say you have assignment 1a 1b 1c 1a you have a pass 1b you have m merit 1c you have merit the overall grade you'll have for assignment one is pass they take the lowest grade you have in the whole Thing. I didn't know that just because I had everything distinction but one pass they'll still take the lowest grade so baby make sure you get if you want distinctions for your whole thing you must get distinctions for every part of the assignment I hope you really understand this point and you really need to like you need to 
but this is how it normally is and it's so sad because you're like i'm working so hard to get these distinctions and then one freaking part of the assignment i get a pass and then that's my overall grade for that unit yes it is so sad i don't know why they do that but that's how it is mate step number nine answering the damn question this goes for coursework and exam based the assignment brief will be like talk about the cells talk about the tissues talk about the organ and then you do cells tissues but you forget the organ you will not get that part of the grade until you fully do everything within that criteria so make sure you really do what is written in the criteria what i mean by answering the damn question exam based like for the exam units i mean read the question and make sure you really really understand it like if you need to just read the question three times i always do that too because sometimes you read what you want to hear that's how we are like that's proven mate stop being delusional step number 10 it's very very important as well you need to have some interest for this course i studied with certain people that didn't really have interest for this course and later on dropped out and stuff like that and just kind of have had to repeat the year several times by the way if you fail if you don't get a pass and stuff you will have to repeat it you'll have to retake and stuff like that so really just know is this what i really want do i really want to like read about some physics out there do you want to read some chemistry do you want to read some biology if you don't like this stuff don't go do it fam because you need to have some certain interest in this stuff it's failure to have interest you will fail you need to have something that makes me be like oh my gosh i really want to do this maybe it's money maybe it's money you're like oh if i study this and then do nursing you know i'll get money and i'll be happy if that's what you want to have as motivation fine if you actually like this stuff fine like you just need to have some motivation some reason some interest related to this course because you may reach a point you want to give up and you need to have a why okay and this is really what can give you that grade your why okay I hope these tips were very helpful for you and if they were please don't forget to leave a like and follow me on all my other socials they'll be on the screen right now and don't forget to subscribe join the gang because I'm going to be doing more videos like this back to school themed and just get into the spirits of school of course I'm excited <laughs> I'm joining my first year at Aston University I praise God for that and I can't wait to take you guys through the process. So if you want to see that first year freshers experience and stuff like that, don't forget to subscribe and put your post notifications on so you don't miss out on my uploads and vlogs. So yeah, I hope you guys really found this video helpful. If you have any other queries, please don't forget to leave them in the comments down below. I'm always ready to answer and just help you out. That's why I made this video, period. So yeah beauty with brains i love it and i thank god thanks for watching until next time bye